Welcome back everybody, I hope you're all excellent. I'm Leon Todd for G66. In today's video, I wanna showcase some of the functionality of Axe Edit, which is the software editor for the Axe FX3 and how we can use Axe Edit to better and more quickly build our own custom preset. So let's dive straight into it. I'm playing my PRS Custom 24 and I'm plugged into input one of my Axe FX3. At the moment, I have Axe Edit open and I have an empty preset. So there is nothing going on just yet. The first tool that I wanna show you how to use is the quick build feature because we've got an empty grid and one way to add blocks to the grid is to go to a particular block, right click it and scroll down to one of the effect blocks that we want and drop it in. But a much easier way to do that is to hit the quick build function here because this is gonna show us a list of all the blocks that we can just drag and drop onto the grid. So before you get into this, think about the blocks that you need for your particular preset that you're building. For me, I definitely need an amp and a cab. I happen to really like reverb and delay, and I wouldn't mind something like a compressor and a wah in my preset. I also need input and output blocks. So I'm gonna grab all of those and just drag and drop them onto the grid. I'm gonna set the input and the output on the same row. I'll put the amp and the cab somewhere near the middle of that particular row, and then I will add my other blocks. I set a compressor and a wah, so I normally run the compressor before the wah. I'll also add a drive block in there because why not? Let's add a delay block and a reverb after the cabinet kind of studio style. Then I can simply click here and click here and connect all of this up. Now, I don't want all of these blocks on in this particular scene right now. So I can do one of two things. I can exit quick build. So that was really, really a lot quicker than having to right click all those times. And then I can either do this. I can double click a block to bypass it. Alternatively, on my keyboard, if you're on a Mac, you can press space. I think that also works on Windows. Don't quote me on it though. Or I can do this. I can click on a block. I can go to the block menu and I can go to all scenes and bypass it on all scenes if I just want the default state of this to be off anytime I select a new scene. But for now, spacebar is gonna work just fine because I wanna start by dialing in my core amp and cabinet tone. Now for me, I have a few user cabinets that I've loaded into my Axe FX3 that I pretty much use for everything. So I'm gonna go to user bank number one. I'm gonna select user cab number three which corresponds to this free IR that you can get from Axchange that I made, LT TV Mix 2. And I almost always go to the preamp tab and set the low cut at 80 Hertz with the filter slopes at 12 dB. This is just what I like. I use this almost by default on every preset that I make. So rather than have to do that every time, this is the second really handy thing we can use. We can access something called the blocks library. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click this little triangle next to where it says blocks library. And I'm gonna hit save. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this Leon default cab, because like I said, this is pretty much my default cabinet. Now let's say I was building a different preset or let's say I did something where I went in here and I, I don't know, I changed this to a legacy cab. And then I went in and I don't know, I just kind of tweaked it and I messed around with it and I ended up not liking it. What I could do is click here in my blocks library, I can bring up Leon default cab and it will bring up those exact settings that I saved. And I can do this with every block. In fact, I have a whole library of my favorite effect types that I've made uh, over the you know months and years of tweaking presets. For example, in my delay block, let's go here and select this particular delay block here, uh, this BBD Halo. This is just a particular setting that I really like in the stereo BBD delay type. I can do the same thing with the amp block. Let's say I bring up this Mark IV lead. Now what I've got is amp settings that I already know that I really like from my blocks library, a cabinet setting and a delay setting. I've almost basically done no knob turning and I have a great lead guitar sound. <laughs> So that's really, really awesome. If I went in here and say, tweet the reverb, and I really like this London plate reverb, say with a mix at about 10% and maybe a little less uh, time there. Let's set that to 1.5 seconds. I'll hit spacebar to engage it. That was our previous trick. I've got... 
I really like that, so let's save it to the blocks library, and I'll just call this London plate default, because it's my kind of default setting for the London plate reverb. That is now saved to my blocks library, so anytime I build a preset from scratch, if I want that reverb setting, rather than tweak stuff manually, I can just recall it from the blocks library. The blocks library is really, really amazing. They're basically presets within presets. So this is coming along quite nicely. I could do the same thing with some of these other blocks. I have uh, drive blocks that I've got in here. For example, some of my favorite drives I've saved in here on channel A. I have the compulsion distortion. I have the tone of kings on channel B. I have the bass fuzz on channel C. And on channel D, I have the octave distortion for whenever I want it. So quick build and the blocks library saves you so much time. Another thing that can save you a lot of time is, for example, let's say uh, you have to play in two different but similar sounding bands. One band is an original band where you play with lots of gain and uh, lots of time-based effects like I do in my band Ragdoll. And then maybe you play in a couple of different cover bands where you need like basically the same kind of tone but maybe some different effects or less gain or something like that. You have to be responsible. What you can do is save this effects layout as a template. So anytime you build a new template, it will have the amp, cab, delay, reverb, whatever effects blocks you like in whatever order you like instantly there. So let's do that. I'm gonna come up here and I want to save this as a template. So let's just call this basic gig. And I've got that saved as a template. So if I went to say a different empty preset in my Axe FX3, Rather than have to do everything that we've done so far in the video, I can just say preset, new from template, and I can go to basic gig. And like magic, it is gonna bring up everything that I want. There is my USA lead mid gain loaded in there. Again, if I wanted a different app, maybe I could use the blocks library or something like that. So that is really, really a great and easy way to build presets from scratch, but, a big part of a preset on a Fractal Audio product is that you have eight scenes within it. So again, let's imagine you're doing those different gigs. One gig for me, I might need three basic scenes, like, you know, a kind of straight up rock crunch, something like this with maybe a little bit of reverb on it. <laughs> So I'm just gonna save that as my kind of basic scene. I said a basic rock crunch, but there is a lot of gain on there. And let's say I want basically the same tone, but maybe I want a drive block engage and I want my delay on for scene two. I can do this. I can go to scenes, copy. I'm gonna copy this scene over to scene two. So now I can go to scene two. I can engage my drive and my delay. I'm gonna save it. Actually, I should call this lead. So now I have a gain boost from this compulsion distortion and I have a delay on. So this is my lead sound now, even more gain and delay. So the copy scenes feature is very, very handy in that case. The other thing that's really, really handy for organizing your scenes is the scene manager. It's a tool down here, well, where it can tell us, hey, across all eight scenes, you can check that your amp is say on whatever channel you want it to be on across all the scenes, whether it's bypassed or engaged, which, you know, for the amp in this example, I'll just leave it on channel A across all my scenes, but maybe my drive block, I only want on scene two. So I could come through here and double check that my drive block is only engaged here on scene two. I said channel A, I meant scene two, my mistake. Let's say the delay over here, we want to muck around with the bypass. Let's say on scene three, I want my delay on, but I want it to be a different delay. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to set it to channel B. So now when I go to scene three, check this out, I go to my delay and it's on, but it's on a different channel. How good's that? And I can set this up. Uh, for example, let's use the vintage digital delay set to a dotted eighth note. I'll set the mix to 50%. And in this case, I've also got a compressor on there, which is just kind of slightly going to clean up everything coming from my guitar. I've got the same amp and the same cab, which again, we could see on the scene manager. Such a, such a handy tool for actually organizing your presets once you've got everything dialed in. Let's hear this scene three. <laughs>
wonderful stuff. I could save this, for example, as my rhythmic delay scene, which is very, very nice. Now, let's say I'm pretty happy with this preset. I could call this uh, Heavy Gig, maybe with a capital H on there. And let's hit save on that. I'll go to scene one because I want it to default to scene one. I could save this preset to a new preset number. So let's do that because let's say this is my slightly less heavy gig preset now where I am gonna to go to the amp block. I'm gonna turn the overdrive down a little bit. Maybe I will turn the reverb up just for this particular preset. And maybe I'll go in and I'll use say a uh, kind of different set of effects instead of this stereo BBD for my main delay, maybe let's set up the 2290 with modulation, which is a great sounding delay, a little bit more effects mix. And let's say uh, the drive block over here on channel A, I want it to be something really crazy sounding. So I want a face fuzz with heaps and heaps of level. So my basic sounds basically gonna be the same with less gain. And let's say scene two, we've now got this delay on, it's a different delay type and it is a fuzz face as the boost. And again, using all the other tools we used, for example, maybe I wanna have on scene three, I still want my compressor, but I want a different effect for this particular preset or this particular rig that I'm building. So we can go quick build and let's add an extra effect. Like say we want a rotary speaker in there directly after the amp. We'll use some of the tricks we used before. I'm gonna to go to block. I will bypass it on all scenes, except this scene. I do want it on on this scene, so I'll double click it so that it's on. And now I have a rhythmic delay with a rotary speaker. And let's just say for fun, I'll change the compressor type. Uh, I have in my blocks library, a bunch of compression types I like. I really like this uh, JFET style compressor on channel A, that's what I want. Beautiful, and Kali 76, if you're familiar with that compressor type. And this is what I've got. I've got a rotary speaker on, I've got a different compressor. <laughs> Excellent stuff. The last trick that I love that we can do in Axe Edit is to set up the perform screen on our Axe FX3. So I'm gonna come over here to perform. <clears throat> you can see there is a page of global performance controls and a per preset performance controls. What this lets us do is use the five encoders on the front panel of the Axe FX3 to instantly access any parameter we like. For example, let's drag this compressor level over here. Let's go to a different block and say maybe the amp overdrive control is something I want to control. Uh, instant access from this perform screen. Uh, maybe the amp level is another important one that I need. And something like the rotary rate might be an important one that I need as well. And let's add a fifth one rather than populate all 10, I'll just do a row of five. And I can come over here and let's select say the delay mix. I'll drag that there. Now on the front panel of my Axe FX3, I have instant access to these parameters where I can say in a gigging situation, have all the important parameters that I need on the front panel right there. It's so, so convenient. So Axe Edit and FM3 Edit, they're just an amazing piece of software when powered with your Axe FX3. It really lets you get the most out of your unit. You don't have to use these. All of these things are accessible from the front panel and the physical hardware on both units. But I personally just find it so much easier to build presets from scratch and to manage my rigs using the editor, thanks to all these very, very handy tools. I hope there was some good information and some advice in there. I know this is meant to be a choose a tone tip, but this was more about how you can actually get into the functionality of the Axe FX. So now that I've done all that, we've actually built a preset here. I'm just going to do a little bit of playing with it over a backing track. I hope you enjoy the tone. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.